week's video, we're talking about a biggie for anybody, and especially people who are creative, which is procrastination. And to talk to us about that is book author, speaker, and trainer Charmaine Hammond, who has written multiple books um, in genres as different as children's books, as well as personal development books. Her most recent book is GPS, Your Best Life, and talks all about how to have the best life you possibly can. And before she was doing that, she wasn't doing anything to do with books. So, Charmaine, how did you get started writing books? <laughs> I love that question because you're absolutely right. I wasn't planning on being an author. I was quite happy as a speaker and a trainer. We adopted a dog named Toby who was a big Chesapeake Bay Retriever. I fell in love and he gave me so much content. He destroyed our house, <laughs> changed our <laughs> life, and <laughs> and he got a job as a therapy dog. And I was so inspired by this dog, I thought, I've got to share this story. And I wrote a story for Chicken Soup for the Soul, and uh, it got accepted. And then we went to a book signing with Toby, watched this incredible dog, Potograph. Don't you love that? <laughs> he would <laughs> potograph the books. And I was hooked. I thought, I think I like this life as an author. And so we expanded our business to now include me as an author. And I met a publisher. She loved Toby's story and said, I want to bring this into a book and sent me a publishing contract. So then I had to write the book because I'd signed a legal document saying that I would. <laughs> <laughs> well, because I'm sure you don't ever have any problems with procrastination at all. I'm sure, <laughs> right? Everything just... Oh. <laughs> procrastination oh boy the the thing i you know i think a lot of us as authors we can find so many other things to do other than promoting our book and getting out there and, and making sales and i see a lot of authors um, struggle with that yeah well procrastination we'll talk about that tomorrow right <laughs> so what do you, exactly what do you think you know you, you've written a book obviously that talks a lot about procrastination and you yourself have been dealt with the challenges of juggling all these different things and, and not putting off those really important key things. But what do you think makes people procrastinate? What are the, the things that cause us to say, you know, I'm just, I can't do that right now. I'll do it later and, and stop ourselves from succeeding? Mm. I'll speak from my experience because uh, one of my biggest barriers and reasons for procrastination is I was a perfectionist. So I would hang on to things, you know, on Toby's terms is a great example of that. I would not have pressed send until the, the a minute before that deadline was due to the publisher. And then I started negotiating with myself saying, oh, they're on a different time zone, so maybe that gives me an extra hour. And I was just not going to let that book go. And a lot of authors that I speak to struggle with perfectionism. And it really gets in the way of movement. It really gets in the way of book marketing activities, selling your book, and uh, certainly your book success. So perfectionism is one. And I think another is fear. Fear of not knowing what to do and not asking other people for help. I think another aspect of fear is just sometimes what we have to do as an author in terms of marketing ourselves, building our platform, expanding our reach, it just seems so big. And there's so many steps involved that we're just not sure what, what step to take. And then sometimes we don't take a step at all. And I've really learned that every step you take, even the tiniest steps, are really important because at least you're moving, you're going somewhere, you're stepping into action and out of procrastination. Yeah, and what is it about procrastination? I mean, I think a lot of people get stuck in the trap too of I'm not procrastinating. I don't procrastinate. I'm just I'm just really busy. I'm doing all this stuff. So, <laughs> so how do you identify when yes, in fact, you are procrastinating and and stopping yourself from taking those big steps forward that are going to mean your success? Uh, I, I think that's a great question. I was actually at a conference where the speaker was talking about people being busy, being busy, being busy, and at the end of the day, they would look back at their results and say, oh, you know, what did I accomplish? What did I get done? And what's important with being busy 
is that we need to make sure that how we're being busy is lined up to our goals. And so what one of the things that we've learned to do is that we focus every day, we structure time to be doing things that promote and market our book. And that's become just a part of my system, a, tar- a part of my routine, but you really have to create that habit because it's so easy to fall into that trap of, doing all the things on your to-do list that you can just check off in five minutes, you know, and the paper is gone, it's crossed off the list. But those activities may not have taken you any further towards your goal or towards marketing and promoting and selling your book. So if you're doing all the little stuff that you can check off, but you're not attacking any of those, those big things, the things that maybe you feel a sense of fear about, the things that maybe you're uncertain about, the things you haven't ever done before, then... Maybe that's a clue that you might be procrastinating on doing some of those things. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> one, and one of the things that can really help is a timer. And in fact, I one of the features on my iPhone that I use more than anything is the little timer on the iPhone. And so certain activities, I know that I tend, I I ha, may have a tendency to get lost in. For example, social media. We go onto Facebook and then. We spend hours, people will spend hours on Facebook, they move to Twitter, and while that can be helpful, it may not have been the best use of three hours of your time, and it's taking you away (laughs) again from (laughs) some of the more important tasks. I hear this all the time from authors, and so I've often suggested, how about set your timer and give yourself 20 minutes, and it's amazing when we create deadlines for ourselves that we can move through things quicker and stay focused longer. Yeah. Well, and I like what you're saying, too, because I, I see that, and then I also see the flip side in some of my clients who, who they, you know, they may spend the three hours one day on Facebook, and then they don't get on Facebook for three weeks, you know, and that yeah. goes back to what you were talking about earlier about just keeping making those steps forward, and one thing that I'm constantly talking about with my clients and in my classes is, is taking those, figure out what you can do consistently and do it consistently. You know, just make those steps forward, 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 and that adds up so much uh, as you go go through. So talking sure about some, setting a timer, setting a timer is a fantastic idea. What are some of the other things that people can, uh, authors can use to overcome procrastination, to just kind of say, you know what, I'm stopping this today. I'm going I'm going to make steps <laughs> forward. <laughs> One of the things that can really help is a clean desk area. When we organize, when you organize your desk and you're not distracted by different piles of paper or different projects that need your attention that need to be done, what happens is that you can focus on the task that you're immediately engaged in. And so if you can work with less on your desk I've seen authors just put everything on the floor and they'll pull one piece of paper at a time or one task at a time. But a clean office area allows you, I think, to be more creative and more focused. And another strategy I believe is so helpful is having a daily routine sheet. This is part of our systems that that, that we created. And so there's certain tasks every day that I know that I need to do. So let's go real basic here for a minute. For example, most authors would say they're going to check their emails. Of course, they want to check their emails early to make sure there might be media requests in their inbox. And I know there's a lot of conversation about do you check your emails in the morning or do you wait and and, uh, let other people's agendas uh, happen in the afternoon. But what we've learned is that we often get a lot of media requests and some of them are very short notice. We need somebody in two hours. Are you available? And I love to be able to say yes. And checking your email can be important. However, that doesn't need to be a half-day adventure like it can be for some of us who get a lot of emails. So the timer is really important. Being able to organize your emails so that you're dealing with your urgents, what I call the red-hot items, first. And then having a daily organizer, a daily planner, where you have a template just in a Word document or an Excel spreadsheet that lists out all of the things that you typically do every day, email, going onto Facebook, posting a blog, for example. Uh, Perhaps it might be calling two or three bookstores to check and make sure your book is in stock. Maybe you're going on the media in a week and you want to call all the stores in that area to let them know that uh, you'll be on media and would they order your books in. Whatever those tasks are that you do repeatedly, put them up on a chart and then every day print that chart down and just 
time your actions and check them off as you go. Because often what happens is people work from a to-do list, their planner, their cell phone, and a bunch of sticky notes. And then it can feel really overwhelming, and we don't know where to start, so we start on the things that are easy, quick, and maybe not helping our business or our mm-hmm. author success. Right, or or the things that are the the squeaky wheel, <laughs> mm-hmm. the things that are whatever is most in our way, rather than saying we're going to take charge of this and we're going to decide <laughs> what's exactly. in the way. <laughs> Yeah, so those those are some great tips. You know, having a timer, having a schedule, a clean work area, prioritizing what's most important. And, you know, obviously for a lot of writers, one of the main things they're doing is writing. And, Mm -hmm. you know, there's this whole creativity thing. And, well, I can't write right now because – and whether – and it might be their book or it might be a blog post or it might Mm -hmm. be Facebook content or, you know, it doesn't just have to be their – book proper it can be any creative right. task i don't feel inspired you know i don't i just don't have any idea for the proverbial writer's block um mm. you know what what would you suggest for authors in that situation to overcome that and still be able to to kick the procrastination out of the room <laughs> one of the things that can really work and i share this a lot with the clients that i work with in mentoring is to set time aside every day so for example i have a client right now who's very busy in her non-author world. And, of course, she comes home and she's tired and doesn't have that inspiration. So I said, the deal is 20 minutes a day. And so that she can handle. So it might just be 20 minutes on a chapter of a book she's working on. It may be 20 minutes on an article that she's going to post on ezinearticles.com. It might be 20 minutes towards a press release that she's drafting for an event coming up. But it's 20 minutes of writing. And then sometimes, of course, she gets inspired and and goes beyond the 20 minutes. So setting that daily time aside is very important. One of the other tools that helps a lot of people is to find a place to write that you feel inspired. A lot of us will write at our, our desk, but we quickly become distracted by other things that need our attention. And so for me, when I was writing and just didn't feel inspired, I would go into the living room, grab my notepad. Normally I was typing my book, but I'd grab a notepad, sit in front of the fireplace, and write there. Or I'd go outside into the sunshine. And and that worked for me really well. Of course, in Canada in the winter, not such a great strategy, though. <laughs> <laughs> the yeah, well, pen I'm, freezes pretty quick. Exactly. I'm in Michigan, too, so I, I know exactly what you're talking about with that winter That's weather. That's a summer-only <laughs> strategy. Yeah, and um, but- the other tip that can work so well for getting over uh, writer's block. This is how I wrote one full book, and uh, I call it "Talking Your Book." I discovered that I love to tell stories. That gr- I, I like to speak about them, and I, it comes easier for me than writing about them. So I bought the Dragon Speak software, and I would talk my book. The software would type it up into Word. Of course, there's lots of time, a lot of editing that you have to do. But what what happened for me is that I found I could tell a story in a much more graphic and emotive way than I could type it, and it just flowed. The book happened so much quicker. And I've used that strategy for other forms of writing, newsletters, blogs, things like that, articles. Right. Well, and I think this idea of finding an inspiring place is a good idea and reducing distractions, and not just with your writing, but just with everything you do. I, I know sometimes when, when I'm on the phone, I find that I just end up pacing <laughs> in my living room because <laughs> if I sit in the office and I sit at the desk and I sit in front of the computer, it's so easy for me to drift off into thinking, about, oh, I just got an email notification or I got a Facebook, and I'm not fully present in that phone conversation. Yeah. And so just putting myself in a, in a position where I can be fully present with what I'm doing right at that moment and just completely make the most out of doing that rather than trying to do all these different things and not really doing any of them well. That's a great strategy. And you actually reminded me of something that I forgot about. Uh, my husband uh, has been known on occasion when I've been talking on the phone, and it, I must be sounding like I'm saying something really brilliant or or uh, <laughs> something that he sees potential for a book or an article because he'll run over what we have a special recording device called – it's made by Zoom. It's called an H4, and it's, it's 
um, a recording device that records in digital and stereo. And so he'll flip that on, and then we transcribe the audio into a Word doc. And that has been very helpful as well, so having the audio of what you're talking about. Yeah, that's great. So right now is a big time of year for procrastination <laughs> because everybody's <laughs> coming into, you know, I know Canadian Thanksgiving is already passed, but American Thanksgiving and the, the winter holidays and everybody is doing all of this other stuff. So what would you say to authors about how they stay focused because this is a really critical time period, too. You know, this is when mm -hmm. most of the book sales take place, most of the searches for books on Google take place and all this kind of stuff. So uh, how can authors stay focused with all the extra noise to say, you know mm -hmm. what, I'm still going to make this a really important year, even with the, the few weeks that are left? One of the strategies for that is, is if you look at, say, if there's six weeks bef between now and the Christmas season or when people are going to order books and have them delivered in time for Christmas, if that's a six-week period, that's a great opportunity to put together a, a small business plan. And it doesn't need to be anything uh, huge and detailed. It's simply a marketing plan for the next six weeks. And you can put things on that marketing plan like connecting with bookstores, making sure they've got your books in stock. In fact, you can offer to swing by and sign them, and they'll put that nice sign by author sticker on there. This is an opportunity as well to find some creative media uh, pitches and to promote to your local media, whether that's radio, TV, or print. Some of the other things that you can do is connect with associations who may have a, a fit for your book. For example, our book on Toby's Terms is about our dog. And we approach animal-related organizations like shelters, animal therapy groups, to talk about buying our books in bulk at a reduced rate. These would be great gifts for some of their clients or volunteers in the program. And another interesting thing is that many nonprofit groups who are government-funded have to expend their budget before, if they're on a, a government fiscal year, before March 31st. So a lot of spending on books and other types of products that they could use in their organization happens between November and January. So it's a great opportunity to reach out to groups that can help sell your book for you. That's great. Well, I am so excited because, uh, as you know, we're going to be doing an actual class period. We've been going through these these series. We talked with Karen about you know, making that dream and making that vision. And then I talked a little bit about this time management. And now we talked about, you know, how you get over these these final hurdles of procrastination and, and you know, not doing those things. And next week we're going to be sharing with you an opportunity for those people who feel like they really want to take it to the next level, that they do want to make the, the last bit of the year here the most meaningful part of the year for them and take their book marketing to a whole new level. And we're going to get more in-depth with these kinds of things that Charmaine was just sharing about. Um, sponsorships and selling in bulk and, and give you some exact techniques for how we do that and how you approach these places, some really specific things for how you set up your time, for how you use social media, all these different kinds of things. Um, Karen and myself and Charmaine are all going to be working on that together. And so that's going to be a very special opportunity just for those people who feel like this is the right time for them, that you're ready to make that vision come true, that you're ready to stop procrastinating, you're ready to take control of your time. So next week we're going to be giving you all the details. You've just got to wait one more week to get all of the details and information about that program and how you can become a part of that if you're interested um, and get some, some more special detailed time with us um, going into the, the deep water of how to make that happen <laughs> for you. And until then, you know, every week we've been giving you a little action item because the most important part of this is that you take action because if you sit and listen to us and then do nothing, you're not going to get anywhere. So today, uh, your action item for this week while you wait for the details of this class to come out and all of that information is that I want you to think about when you're, what you're procrastinating about, what's holding you back, what are some things you can eliminate that are not moving your book forward, not moving your life forward, not helping you reach that vision, and how you can structure your time so that when you get all of the, this information that you're able to apply it right away and do it. So that's your action item for this week, and next week we're